Night has faded over Collinwood, but for one woman, the darkness still remains. Elizabeth Stoddard, teased and taunted by young David's lies, has suffered a night of doubt and despair. And with the day, she has come to the village, determined to learn what drew David to this place. Good morning, Mother. Anything special you'd like to see? Yes, I want to see Mrs. Todd. Sorry, Megan and Philip are away for the day, so I'm afraid you'll have to deal with the hired help. <laughs> Mother, why are you looking like that? Is something wrong? Something is very wrong. What is it? I have a feeling. A very strong feeling. What? Carolyn, I don't want you to come to this place anymore. like that with no reason? I have no reason. Just a feeling. A strange and distressing feeling. That whatever is wrong with David has to do with this shop. What's wrong with David? I saw him come in here late last night. I heard him leave. And yet when I questioned about him, he denied it. <laughs> oh, mother. You've got all this bothering you. You're dismissing it rather casually, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am, because I know what actually happened. Megan told me about it before she left. Suppose you tell me. All right. Apparently, David did steal the missing book because he tore a page and got frightened. Last night, he sneaked back in here and returned it. So your mystery's no longer a mystery. Well, why didn't he tell me that last night? Why did he lie? Oh, he's a small boy. He probably thought that was the safest course for him to take. But Megan found the book this morning. So, now that everything's been explained, I'll go on with my dusting. No, Carolyn, everything hasn't been explained. What do you mean? When David came in here last night, he was carrying a box from Brewster's. When I followed him in, he was nowhere to be seen, but the box was plainly in view on the counter. Maybe he carried the book in that way. No. Mrs. Todd said the box was hers. Right, he didn't carry the book in that way. It was a different box from Brewster's on the counter. Don't you think that's rather coincidental? Mother, you're getting as bad as David when you find something sinister in a box from Brewster's. Everyone in town probably has one. Hundreds of people buy things there every day. Yes. Yes, they do. I'll see you later, Karen. in the shop. And the enemies shall be overcome one by one. David? I've been making inquiries, and I know a lot more than I did last night. One thing I know is that you did steal that book from the shop, so don't bother denying it. Yes, I did, Aunt Elizabeth. 
I'm sorry I had to lie to you. But I returned it last night. I know. Mrs. Todd told Carolyn. Why do I have the feeling that she's lying too? I don't know. There's something about the way you were looking when you were reading just now. David, what is that book? Just a book. May I have it? I said, may I have it? What is this, David? It's just a book. I like the colors in it. Well enough to have stolen it? This isn't the book from the antique shop. Well, where is it from? I found it somewhere in the house. I don't remember exactly where. I'll try and remember if you like. While you're remembering, how about remembering a visit to Brewster's last night? I wasn't in Brewster's last night. Oh, yes, you were. I checked on that, too. And I saw Miss Templeton remembered selling you a pair of pants and a shirt. No. David, there's no use denying it. She showed me the sales slip. You were there. I'm not denying it, Aunt Elizabeth. I was there, only in the afternoon. Miss Templeton just got the time mixed up. You, you know she's always getting things mixed up. I see you have an answer for every question. So we'll just have to leave things the way they are until I have a chance to talk to Mrs. Todd again and show her this. You can't take that. I already have. I know what's really wrong. Well, then suppose you tell me. You're just as bad as my father. You don't want Carolyn working in the shop, so you're taking it out on Mel Megan and Philip. I am taking nothing out on the Todd. I will give them a chance to explain anything they want to explain. And an explanation is due, I know that. And in the meantime, you will not leave the grounds until I tell you you may. Is that clear? Yes. I'm sorry things have to be this way. Why do they have to be this way, Aunt Elizabeth? Why can't we have any fun anymore? We will, David. We will. Hey, Carolyn, what are you doing? I did but see him passing by, and yet I love him till I die. I don't understand a word you're saying. Barnabas, I wouldn't tell this to anyone else, but I've just met the most fascinating, the most fantastic man. <laughs> just where did this happen? Right here in the shop, about two hours ago. He walked in, we talked for ten, maybe fifteen minutes, and it seemed as if we'd known each other all our lives. That is most unusual. <laughs> unusual is hardly the word for it. Barnabas, when you told me that I, I would meet someone and meet him unexpectedly and really find out what love was, I, I must admit I thought it was a very pleasant but improbable prediction. You do remember telling me that, don't you? Yes, I do. I told you, and I meant it. <laughs> well, then why are you surprised? I suppose I didn't expect it to happen quite so quickly. Well, you're just the point, Barnabas. Something did happen. Something real and tangible did happen. When that bell tinkled, and I looked up into the face of a man I'd never seen before. You mean he was as taken with you as you were with him? I don't know, but he was interested enough to ask if he could come back here this evening. When? He's coming here at 10 tonight. I see. Well, let's hope that the young man doesn't disappoint you on his second visit. Let's hope not. Well, 
how's the game going, David? Terrible. What's the trouble? Oh, Aunt Elizabeth is all hung up on the idea that I stole that book from the antique store. Even though Mrs. Todd told her I returned it, she doesn't believe it. What does she believe? Oh, that the book she saw in my room is the book from the antique store. And what does she intend to do with it? Take it to Mrs. Todd and ask a whole bunch of questions. She thinks I'm a liar. She thinks Mrs. Todd's a liar, too. Well, your Aunt Elizabeth has a way of taking things very seriously, doesn't she? If you ask me, she has a way of making trouble. David, I don't like to see you this unhappy. Why don't we go for a walk and... Well, you can tell me all your troubles. Would you like that? Yes, very much. I'm so puzzled by this. What is it? A book that David took from the shop. I can't understand why. I'm sure that a, a scholar of, of lost and ancient languages would be interested in this, but, uh, well, David's hardly that. I'm sure he can't read one word of it. But there's something about it that makes him tell me one lie after another. What language is this? I have no idea. But I have figured one thing out. Where? There are, seem to be repetitions of certain symbols throughout, certain refrains, so to speak. What do you suppose that means? It's the sort of thing one finds in a religious book. Barnabas, I could swear this is some kind of devotional book. Well, your talent for detection impresses me, Elizabeth. I haven't detected why David is so attracted to it yet, but I will. Well, all of this is certainly very curious. But there's one thing about this book, and that it's, it's valuable. Uh, I'm going down to the village quite soon. Why don't I take it back to the antique shop for you when I go? Oh, would you? I'd appreciate that. Before you go, will you have a sherry or some brandy? No, nothing to drink, thank you. Oh, well, then stay with me for a minute while I have some sherry. Elizabeth, does the sherry really relax you? I keep hoping it will. And sometimes it does, for a time. Well, why don't you try relaxing without the sherry? Have you any suggestions? Yes, I do. I want you to do exactly what I tell you. When I leave, go upstairs and just lie down. Think of all the things that are troubling you and one by one force them out of your mind so that your mind is as clear and empty as you can make it. Think pleasant thoughts. Relax. And you'd be surprised how good the sleep you have will do you. That sounds fine until I think about Carolyn and David. Forget them. Tonight, think of Elizabeth only. All right, Barnabas. I'll do just as you say, and we'll see what happens. Promise. I promise. And I promise you pleasant dreams. Have a good rest. I'll try to And the enemy shall be overcome, one by one. Why did you bring me here, David? <laughs> to have fun like everybody else. 
<laughs> Didn't you and my father ever come to a place like this when you were young? I don't remember. Come now, Aunt Elizabeth, you should remember. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> well, that is impor important. What's important is that you're here now. <laughs> <laughs> David, what am I supposed to do here? Look at yourself in the mirrors. Mirrors? <laughs> Will they show me all the people I could have been? No. <laughs> They'll show you all the people you really are. No. <laughs> I don't want to look at them. Oh, but you have to. That's why I brought you here. No. Relax, Anne. You should just relax. You don't relax enough. You don't laugh enough. <laughs> walked in front of me. I had no warning. I couldn't see him until it was too late. You'd better see if he's alive. Oh, my God. Barnabas, that's the man who was coming to meet me. 